21st Century Radio is sponsored by Hieronymus and Company. This is Talk Radio 680 WCBM. It's time now for award-winning 21st Century Radio. Here's your host, Dr. Bob Hieronymus. While you're scrolling down the fairway, showing no remorse, growing from the poisons they've sprayed on your golf course. While you're busy sinking birdies and keeping your scorecard, the devil's been busy in your backyard. Yes, indeed, the devil has been very busy for the last couple of years in our backyard. Welcome back to 21st Century Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Hieronymus, our executive producer and research assistant, Laura Cortner, and our engineer is Anita Brockington. Well, we've been so pleased by all the coverage in the media about the debut of the light bus, the VW that I painted that went up to Woodstock in 1969 and where it became world famous, and I didn't even know it when it was world famous. The story went out worldwide at the end of February thanks to a great photo shoot and press release from Volkswagen of America where they put our bus in a beautiful setting on a cliffside with the Pacific Ocean behind it and showed it off in all its brilliance. The story has been picked up by automotive bloggers all over the place, as well as by television stations in Sacramento, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Delaware, Billings, Montana, Altoona, Pennsylvania, Idaho, and many more. The West Coast is just about 30 years ahead of the East Coast's consciousness. We have three guests tonight, beginning with Robert Darlington, who is not just a musician, but a poet, an author, and a dear friend of mine. Well, we'll be listening to his music and some of his poems and haku, haku, haiku. That's right, haiku. Welcome back to 21st Century Radio. Robert, tell us about... Hey, Bob, how are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm going 122 miles an hour. <laughs> I'm <gonna> slow <laughs> down now, Bob. I'm sorry. Hey, you better put on the brake. <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, okay, they're on. Okay, but tell us just a little bit about uh, the. Um, let's see. Sorry, your group that produced emotionally exciting, politically charged, and socially aware music. There, I got it. Oh, Translator. Oh, yeah, those guys. Uh, yeah, Translator was a, a band that I, I'm still a member of. It's the same four original members since um, March 1980. And uh, a lot of people don't remember who we are or have never heard about us. Uh, we stopped most of our playing around uh, 1986, although we have gotten back together since then and done live performances and put out more music. But we made four records for uh, Columbia Records back in the early 80s, and we uh, you know, did a lot of touring, and we made videos for early MTV and... Uh, you know, we we actually were quite popular. We were the, I think, band of the year on college radio in 1982. Um, but uh, we, the records that we put out were really critically acclaimed, but a lot of, uh, you, you know, we were with Columbia Records, which was a, a big mega label, and, you know, the other three guys, that three acts that are, and our guy handled were Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, and Billy Joel. So <laughs> we we didn't get a whole lot of attention. Yeah, there, I but, never but, heard of any of those guys. Who are they? <clears throat> I know just a bunch of posers. I'm yeah, not really sure, thought. but <laughs> no, they're all uh, they're all they're all uh, pretty. Uh, you know, I mean, Dylan of course was a huge influence on me. So I, I, I love Bob Dylan. Uh, and Billy Joel, we actually met at my father's place, a club in Long Island, when we played there, and he was a very nice guy. And, uh, you know, I haven't really ever met Bruce Springsteen, but, uh, you know, you never know. You never someday. know. Yeah, yeah. Well, how <laughs> so, long have you been... And anyway, I want to congratulate you on the van. That's fantastic, on the well, white van. Well, totally unexpected, Robert. Totally. Yeah, the... I was totally not conscious of what was going on in the world when it was being featured in Japan and the rest of the co world, <laughs> really. I had no idea, and other people let me know, and I didn't pay attention because I had to make some money. I had to yeah. do murals and things like that. Right, and, right. and so when people would show me pictures of it, I said, well, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, but it, it, it cer certainly uh, 
made a difference over a long period of time. So it was 50 years later that I came to realize what it was, and I'm glad we succeeded in raising the 90,000 plus in order to, to put it back together. Right, right. And I think few people uh, are aware of the fact, too, that, that uh, your, your painting that then was what probably influenced uh, John Lennon to paint his Rolls Royce. That's for the... sure. Yes. Uh, John gave me a call and said, do you mind if I paint my <laughs> Rolls Royce after a scene? <laughs> I don't think Rolls Royce really liked it very much. No, they didn't. I have. A, uh, <laughs> and I think I heard when A Whiter Shade of Pale by oh. Purple Harum came out that he had a record player uh, suspended in his back seat of his role so that it, he could play a whiter shade of pale while he drove around uh, well, London in his role. So. Well, that was a very moving song. It really yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, oh, God, before yeah. we run out of time, and we got a long to go, we can't, we can't <laughs> stop here. How long have you been yeah. writing poetry and lyrics? And who and what influenced you to write? Uh, well, I have been writing poetry probably since I was a child. I really got into it when I was uh, a teenager, and um, there was a, a class they were having for a special summer class. This is in Los Angeles, where I grew up, and uh, out in the San Fernando Valley. And uh, anyway, uh, kids were chosen from all over L.A. City schools, I think only 12, and I didn't figure I had much of a chance, but I wrote some poems and submitted, and I got... Uh, I got into the class, and that really started to inspire me. And um, the, the class actually, uh, we, we had some people show up, like uh, the late Harlan Ellison, the speculative science fiction writer, showed up and spoke to us. And Charles Champlin, who was a great film critic at the L.A. Times at the time, came. So that, that really had an uh, effect on me, and I really, really got into uh, writing poetry then. And then... When I graduated from high school and went to college, I had a poetry mentor there named uh, Robert Deutsch, who was a close friend of John Mer excuse me, John Berryman and Delmore Schwartz, who were uh, both very fine poets in the 1940s and 50s and 60s, and uh, and he had a big influence on me, encouraged me to write, and that's some of the the poems that are in my book, uh, The Passenger, which I released, published last year. Uh, were actually written at that time when I was in my early 20s. So, um, but that's really when it it all kind of came together for me in the in the 70s. I got some poems published in literary magazines, and uh, and I, I'd actually been writing more songs recently over the years. I've been writing songs since I was also uh, fairly young. So, um, I you know, and I the whole time during translator, I didn't really write a lot of poetry, but. And over the last 20 years, especially in the last four years, I, I, I've i really been writing a lot more. You know, I took a trip to France to visit some friends and uh, while I was there in Paris, of course. <laughs> American in Paris, I was uh, inspired to start writing again. And ever since then, uh, I've just been kind of writing nonstop and produced two books last year. So well, We're going to listen to you some of your poems. You're going to read a couple of them or so in, in a haiku later on. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, but is writing a song lyric different from writing a poem? Uh, <clears throat> it, it, you know, it can be. I, I used to, it seems to be easier for me now. Uh, when I was younger, I, I could kind of do one or the other. It was harder for me to switch back and forth. Now uh, I can write a poem and, and the same day write a song lyric. So it doesn't influ affect me quite as much as it once did. Um, but, you know, that just may have been a way I was thinking about it at the time, too. So I may have set up that impasse in my own head. But lately, uh, the, the two are different. I mean, a song lyric, uh, you know, a, a lot of poetry uh, will not necessarily make a great song lyric. But I th think sometimes great song lyrics can act as great poetry. But... Um, Two of the songs on a recent translator release were poems that I wrote that are actually in The Passenger um, that Steve Barton, who's the other singer, songwriter, and translator, uh, uh, he actually set those to music, and they're on a, a, a release that we put out about a, two years ago called Carriage of Days. Mm -hmm. And uh, so sometimes poetry does work as a lyric. He had to rearrange a few words here and there, but... 
the the poems are pretty much intact as I wrote them. So, um, you know, I think it's just different for everybody. You know, I, I just, uh, you know, sometimes, like I said, it's, you know, I get a real strong sense to write lyrics, and sometimes, you know, I, I blame it all on my muse. You know, <laughs> it's all it's all their fault. I know. Well, it's good <laughs> it to have takes a muse because you can't. Responsibility. You, so, yeah. you know, actually having actually thinking in those terms about a muse and stuff is not a bad idea because it kind of gives you a little bit of distance from what you're writing. So, mm-hmm. you're you're not captured in the thinking that everything you're doing is just you know brilliant. So. <laughs> You know, you can step back from it and have a little bit of uh, discretion. You published two poetry books last year. Can you tell us something about them? Uh, yes, the uh, the passenger is. Um, uh, what I did too is I started a my own publishing company um, called Dragon Turtle Books. It's my own publishing house, and you know I can publish other people's books too uh, through it. Uh, but I did it primarily to publish my own books. Uh, the Passenger is a book of more of a Western style free verse. Primarily, there are there are some rhyming uh, poems in here, but uh, it's primarily free verse. Uh, most of these poems were written after I when I were, I began writing them when I was in France, and uh, about uh, four years ago, March 2015, and uh, and I just. It just uh, it hasn't really stopped. It's like I think John Keats said that if poetry comes at all, it should come easily, you know, like leaves from leaves on the branches of the trees. So it's been kind of like that for me, and I know it's not really like that for most people. Uh, it never was for me, uh, but it's kind of gotten to that point now. And uh, and anyway, I wound up writing about a hundred and. Uh, 40, 50 poems over the course of that uh, until up to last June. And then I compiled about 120 of those into a, a book uh, that uh, Steve Barton of Translator wrote the foreword for. And uh, an old friend of mine did the, uh, the cover. Uh, you know, she's a really great book designer. And I took the photos for the cover. And uh, next thing you know, uh, Everything uh, came together, and we had a book. So uh, I have a, you know, I, I I have a page on Facebook for it, and uh, I've gotten a very very good feedback on it from uh, from people. I primarily post these poems at Facebook uh, as a as a outlet for them, and uh, just the response I've gotten has been fabulous. So it's been very encouraging. But so you would publish uh, books for other writers, is that right? Yeah, I could certainly. I mean, I have a publishing house, but it's the thing is, I don't really have a lot of budget to, you know, I, I could definitely get them Library of Congress numbers and do some other things, but uh, at this point, I don't really have any way of bank, <clears throat> excuse me, bankrolling books by people like a big publisher does. They would pretty much have to do a lot of their own artwork and things like that and get it ready. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, we have a little problem here. We're going to take a break here to try to fix that up. Is that right, Courtner? All right. We're talking to Bob Darlington, 23 Haiku, November 18th, Dragon Turtle Press, The Passenger, Selected Poems, 1972 to 2018, Dragon Turtle Press, 2018. Both these books are available on Amazon.com or his website, RobertDarlingtonPoetry.com, Robert darlingtonpoetry.com Bob Darlington's music you can find online at robertdarlington.bandcamp.com robertdarlington.bandcamp.com
We have two prizes now for the first two callers at 410 WCBM 680. First caller wins a book of poetry called The Passenger, Selected Poems, 1972 to 2018. And the second caller will win the book called 23 Haiku, both courtesy of Dragon Turtle Press and Bob Darlington. He has signed them both. But you need to qualify, and here's how you do it. If you know the answer to this hour's quiz question on 21st Century Radio and you have not won from us in the last 60 days, call in now. 410-922-6680. That's 410-WCBM680. First with the right answer wins. Prizes are available for you to pick up at the WCBM studios in Pikesville after Friday of this week. Winners have 60 days to pick up the prizes and must wait 60 days before winning another prize from 21st Century Radio. Good luck. This is Billy Cox with Band of the Gypsies and the Jimmy Hendrix Experience. You're listening to 21st Century Radio with Dr. Bob Hieronymus. In your carriage of days, in your carriage of days. Carriage of Days, poem by Bob Darlington, set to music by Translator. Okay, what is the latest with your band, Translator, and any solo music that you may be writing or recording or performing? Oh, yeah, well, I I, I play a lot. Right in my neighborhood, there are quite a few musicians, and uh, right across the street is my, uh, uh, my neighbor, Mike Redding, is really a great musician and songwriter himself and uh, he also uh some of the music on carriage of days he recorded all of my musical tracks for those and he also uh produced and mixed one of the songs on the on the carriage of uh days release called uh, barely alive which is like i said one of, the, one of the songs that i wrote um carriage of days is the latest thing translator released that was about two years ago and uh, that also includes, um, that includes, uh, I think, four uh, new translator songs and a live recording of Remember by John Lennon from 1982. And uh, it also includes an entire second album that we had released called Big Green Lawn. And, from, uh, and, and that's from 2012, I believe. And that's also on there. So. Uh, let's, let's hear about time. Let's hear you read some of your poems and the haiku, then we can oh, sure. talk about them. What is your pick? Uh, I was going to read one that's in the book called uh, Inarticula Mortis, which uh, was uh, is dedicated to an old friend named Richard Brian Apthorpe. And this poem I wrote uh, probably when I was about 22 or 3 years old, and it was originally published in uh, the Huntsville Literary um, Society uh, publication called Poem from Huntsville, Alabama in 1979. So let me read that one. It was also read on uh, a classical music station in Los Angeles in 1979 after it was uh, published first. And I can't remember the, the call letters for the, uh, for the uh, radio station, but it, it's the main one out there, I think. So anyway, this is called An Articula Mortis, which means at the moment or of death or on the brink of death. So, And this is actually uh, written in blank verse, so it's iambic pentameter that's unrhymed. So, The movement of the stars above our heads gives false solace to our hearts. In time, every star must fall. The fate of all things is silence without memory or pain, a dissolution and a ruin. Our dreams must fade beyond the night, Beauty will be forgotten along the vast expanse of dust. And who would live forever with deep sorrow, condemned to suffer every ache and wound? Fate is kind to offer silence over endless pain and fear. Oblivion is sweeter than ambrosia, which must taste sour after countless centuries. 
even gods must dream of nothingness and peace. Their lives are worthless things because they have no end, just infinities of words and deeds that no one will remember. Countless, countless thoughts will be their own, for mortals will be shades, and with them all the firmament. Pity gods who know no rest, though they die each night in sleep. So, what sorry, was, I got a little tongue-tied there. <laughs> what, what was the title of that one? In Articula Mortis. It's Latin. Okay, I could I mean, hardly pronounce it. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> okay, and, so, Could you do one more? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let me read one that's more recent. Called This is called A Once Red Rose. In the, oh, yes. This I, don't, is a, I, don't have, yeah. I don't wear dentures, but I feel like I have them in t- right now, so uh, hopefully yeah. I won't trip over my teeth here again. Yeah, uh, this anyway, is this is called okay. A Once Red Rose. This will probably be in my next book. So this was just written maybe a month or a month and a half ago. In this forgotten garden of a once red rose, the evening spreads its empty hue, No longer will my hands be certain, lost among daffodils and hydrangeas, colorless and mute against the fading sky. Deep with these flowers of night, there are no more words left to gather in the darkness of a new moon. I walk as if my steps are tangled with petals and comets, the intricate trellis of forever sparkling overhead. Blind to all of this glory, I hear nothing. My footsteps far away now. The fragrance of decay overwhelming me. That's a little bit overwhelming for me too, really. <laughs> no, really, it is oh, yeah. because no, no, you know the that. sadness, the yeah. sadness of, uh, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. from going from a rose to uh, some other smaller flower, which doesn't have the same kind of aroma and everything, and everything. Now, what about yeah. what about haiku? Can you tell us what haiku is before you? Haiku, yeah. Actually, in the preface to my book, uh, 23 Haiku, um, uh, I, I, I have a, in, the, in the preface I say that I think these are really haiku-style poems. Haiku is a Japanese uh, uh, poetry form, and it's 17 syllables. It's usually the fir- three lines. The first line is five syllables. The second is seven and the third is another five syllables. Now, the thing is that in Je- Japanese, and I, I studied Japanese, the language, for several years, is that every syllable is a, in, has individual meaning of itself, unlike English. So you have 17 opportunities there to really totally intensify what you're writing about. In English, it's not the same. You have to kind of generate the same sort of emotional impact with uh, with fewer of the syllables in English, having that sort, you know, syllables in English don't have their individual meanings, generally mm-hmm. speaking. So, mm-hmm. uh, so what I try to do is keep it to the traditional syllable number, and try to give it a sort of haiku feel. Haiku frequently have a seasonal reference, um, or so that you can say, oh, that's a poem about the fall or the autumn you know, or the summer, spring, you know, winter, whatever. Um, so there's, there's frequently, uh, you know, that sort of imagery in it. The, the greatest uh, haiku writers considered to be uh, Basho, who was, uh, lived many hundreds of years ago, and uh, he wrote the famous haiku about, you know, the, an old frog on a rock, you know, the sound plop, you know, and jumping in the water. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, it's the most famous haiku there probably is about a frog jumping into the water. But it's the purpose of haiku is to really create an intensified uh, brief image of something. It's more like a photograph in in that way. So uh, um, they're a little, personally, I think reading them is probably... uh, on your own, it can have more impact. I think generally looking at a haiku and having some time to savor it, but I'd be happy to read read a couple here. They're all very short. So Would you please, because we, we have about four or five minutes left. Wow, that's all? My God. Yeah, I know. It goes like crazy. You know, just, just excuse all your other guests. You know, just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. They yeah. both sound very interesting. You know, just, I, I've been to the... Uh, 
to the Visionary Museum. It's a wonderful place, yes. Jesse. I went there with one of her classes years ago. So, But anyway, this is a haiku I wrote for a friend named Tom Decker who makes incredible uh, matcha uh, tea bowls for the tea ceremony. He makes Korean-style uh, tea bowls, and he gave me one of these. And it was just marvelous. So I wrote this, this haiku, and here it is in its three lines of glory. Clay dug from the soul a bowl fit for the Buddha or any beggar. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's, that's all it is. <laughs> that's all there is. And, but, uh, yeah, but it's, uh, there's, you know, it's, so if you're reading this, you can kind of go back and really, you know, the, the whole thing is about, uh, like I said, kind of creating like a photo almost. But here's another one I'll read quickly here. It's uh, number 21 in the book. Moonlight lifts my shade. Stars cling to a far shoreline. Endless sea of night. Mm-hmm. Endless sea of night. Wow. You know, in one of your poems that I was attracted to, if you don't mind my breaking rules and regulations. Oh, no, here, not at all. Climate change. On page 116, finally, the vast, a vast majority now of Americans now understand what our president does not understand, that we are in deep trouble climate wise oh yeah absolutely yeah and we've done nothing to protect ourselves so there's going to be a lot of trouble for people uh that shouldn't have had to go on have gone through this but but stupidity leads to this kind of thing we should have protected ourselves but instead he decided his ego was more important yeah i think the last line of that poem is finished before we go missing that's right yes (laughs) Yes. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. I think it, it's just it's just silly that you know that there isn't more of an uproar about this. That uh, you know, that, I mean, this you know, there's no other animal besides human beings that you know kind of craps in its nest. You know? <laughs> so I know. Yeah, well, I, we're, it's exactly what he's done. But yeah. it's a, Excuse my French, but uh, it's uh, no, I, I shouldn't say that either. I love the French language. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a horrible thing, really. And the poem is kind of trying to use, you know, changes in emotional climate to uh, to mirror what's kind of going on outside in the world, and uh, which is something poetry often does. It's it generally has a deeper meaning than. You know, and, and poetry is very subjective. You know, I'm always amazed that anybody likes anything I write. Oh, you know, so because oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's just, you know, images are can be very personal. But I do try to write stuff that I think everybody can enjoy and relate to. And but we do have some we, meaning in. We do have enough time to, if you can read climate change. Do you have it with you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. It's right, right here. There it uh, is. Uh, let me, uh, me, 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 I'm almost there. Uh, page, climate change, sure. Page 116. Yeah. Okay. The climate in your eyes tells me the wind will not blow this way again. Impartial to my protests, deaf to propitious stars that once led me through heaven. Oblivious, my mortal weakness pushes through the grim dust of a deeper sadness. All windows open now against your rising shallows. Your invisible threat for mending this great terror in the web of creation's melancholy. A soaring breath of isolation. Finished before we go missing. Finished before we go missing. That's a powerful line. Oh, and, thanks, Bob. Well, Thank the you. problem is, is, of course, we're not, since we have not tackled this problem of climate change, so many children, so many other people are going to lose their lives, their property, Etc., etc., and all because we just did not take the time to listen, and we unfortunately got the wrong guy in office who has been a disaster. A disaster, yeah. Um, no, I, I absolutely, but I'm amazed. Yeah. What I'm amazed at most of all is how Republicans, who always allegedly took the high road, have taken the low road for so long. That's what's so amazing. You know, yeah, it is kind of amazing. I come from a family of Republicans, although I don't really go that way these days myself. But uh, I haven't really talked to them in a while. I'm not really sure how they feel about 
what's happened to the to the grand old party, but uh, it's not too grand these days. It's, it's certainly not. It's kind of uh, it's very sad, it, very sad. Because yeah, the same as Trump's old party, you know, it's you know. It's a Trump party. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the TOP, not the GOP. So, well, um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's really. Well, so, we'd I mean, like to we'd like to play before we run out of time, and it's any second here. We'd like to play a piece of music, right, of yours, oh, called. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. We talked a lot about poetry. Right? Every night I change. Oh yeah, yeah, oh. absolutely. This is from Big Green Lawn, and it's also on Carriage of Days. Okay. Our universe may be standing still, but every night I change. I've forgotten every face we've ever seen, so every night I change. I'm tired of hearing about what might have been, so every night. Uh, Bob, unfortunately, yeah. we got to say goodbye right now. Now, uh, how can people get a hold of this music? Uh, the, the music is for sale at all the usual places, uh, iTunes, uh, Amazon. Amazon. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, all, all, every pretty much anywhere music is available. The music is available, and The Passenger is also available at Amazon and uh, Barnes & Noble, other booksellers you can uh you do have to order it, though. The, you know, uh, and the, you can also go to any bookstore and order it. Copies okay. of the passenger or twenty three haiku. Well, thank you for joining us tonight, and I'm well, sure. Thank we'll... you again, my friend. I enjoyed it as always. Let's yeah, I wish we had time. more time. <laughs> yeah, me too. Isn't that what everybody says? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, you take care of yourself. Thanks and again, we're Bob. and we're going out with barely alive. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah.